glad we could make it down here. So I've changed the title of my talk a little bit. Um, I think we're all here to find out what works, what actually works in our area, um, what has been working. We By no means do we have it figured out, but we've been in business a, a little while now and we recently moved to a new facility. So, so that's been good. Um, I'm going to kick it straight off with, with it's called Lean, it comes from Lean Manufacturing. Um, we think it's the best business management tool because it aligns so closely with the laws of nature and physics first off, and secondly, um, what we read in the gospel. So with Lean, there's two pillars. The first one is continuous improvement. That's just what it sounds like, always improving. Very open to change, but but not chaos necessarily. The other one is respect for people, and that is so, so important. That's respect for our employees, respect for each other, respect for our customers, just always thinking about about others. Um, Lean was introduced to us through this, this guy, this book. Um, Two Second Lean, the guys from Washington. You can listen to it for free on this app. Um, it's on there on audio. It's a, it's a quick little listen, I highly recommend it. And if you do listen to this book or read this book, the most important part in the book is right here on the cover. How to grow people and build a fun lean culture. That's your, that's your two pillars right there, growing people, that's your respect for people, helping them develop, expanding the, the, the capabilities of your people, and building a fun lean culture, a culture where we all respect each other and where we're always continuously improving. I missed that, and the, for the first while while we were doing lean, it was pretty stressful, so don't do that. Okay, so moving into the hydroponics a little bit, so this is our greenhouse, and you can see this is kind of why this you, you're not. This isn't a, a very likely place to find a farm. It's a gravel hill. We don't even have greasewood growing here, but thanks to technology, uh, we can we can turn these places into farms. This is an industrial park that the town of Grable is is trying to. I don't like being behind this thing. That the town of Grable is trying to grow and develop. Sorry, Micah. Um, here's from the other side, um, same thing, uh, unproductive land, and I would like to point out we do do delivery, that's probably, it's hard to say if it's half our business or a quarter or whatever, but we do do delivery, we go from Billings to Lander and then <coughs> over to Yellowstone in the summertime, they get the guest ranches. So the hydroponic system we use is called Deep Water Culture, DWC. So we've got these four ponds. Uh, the lettuce floats on these styrofoam rafts. The styrofoam rafts are about three quarters of an inch thick. And you can see here, they, they've got holes and the plants, the plants go down through those holes, the roots trail in the water. Um, water's about nine inches deep. This system has some advantages. There's really two systems to grow lettuce that you'll see. Um, deep water culture is one, the other one is called NFT, Nutrient Film Technique, so that's the one where you see the trace up high. Um, pros and cons to both. Um, this one, the, the pro is it's cost efficient. It's very cheap to put in. We've got 2x12s and the pond liner. And the other one is very expensive. This one, you do struggle a bit more with humidity issues, because with that NFT you get airflow up from the bottom. But a trade-off. These are the rafts we use. We've got four different sizes. So this one here on the left, that's a 72 hole raft. Um, they're in there. So from, they go from our 1020 plug trays, the stuff we grow out to a full, a full size head. It will go on this 72 for about two weeks just to get a little bigger. It's, it's, it's uh, to conserve space. You're trading a little bit of labor for space um, when you're doing that. Then the next two sizes there, that's for uh, like our spring mix product, the stuff that stays a little smaller. Our trio pack, if you've been to Fremont Local Market, you've seen both of those, this, the spring mix and the trio pack. And then the one there on the end, that's 
that's, uh, that's eight inch spacing, and that's everything that's gonna go to a full size head. We aerate the water. I'm probably gonna have to move through this a little bit quicker. We got, we circulate the water. So we just, it's a very, very simple deal. We have a pool pump and then these, we've got these laterals about every 20 feet. And it's just like a giant, lazy whirlpool. Um, moving the, the, the aerated water and the nutrients around. This is how we handle our nutrients. Um, we mix up a batch in these two tanks. And then this here, our uh, meter, that's EC and pH. So pH, we're keeping that balanced. And then EC is, is how much um, basically stuff is in the water, how much nutrient is in the water. So we're, we're adding that, and we just add it with buckets. Uh, it's, it's not very, how can I say, it's not very advanced, but it works great. Okay, a few sayings we use. This one is very important. Problems <laughs> make us happy. And so look at this. This is going on right now. This picture is about a week and a half old. And to Dad and I, this is awful. This is serious problems. These. All this should look, you know, like this. It should be perfectly uniform. This is a serious nutrient deficiency. So one tool we use with lean is called the five whys. So you just basically ask why to get to the root of the problem. Because when you're at the root of the problem, it's very <coughs> easy to fix. Imagine a river, like to divert a river at the bottom or to divert it at the top, right? Big difference in the amount of effort it takes. So ask why till you get to the, to the to the uh, root. So here's what we got. Nutrient deficiency was potassium. Why is the potassium low? Well, it was low in the water. Why is there no potassium in the water? Well, come to find out, I, well, there was low potassium in the nutrient mix. I had messed it up. I had not put in enough potassium in the nutrient mix. So why did that happen? Well, this is how we've always ran our fertilizer. Okay? <laughs> is it any surprise that I might have missed one or half of one? So we fix it. Problems make us happy. Let's just, let's just fix it, and next time this isn't going to happen. And this is by no means an uh, end-all and be-all fix. But we've got, well, now we've just basically we had these check boxes, cleaned everything up. It's on a spreadsheet now, and we've got a running list of what's going on. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing poorly. This just helps us get stuff done. So this right here is to manage our duct tape and wire. And for the longest time, I wanted to put nice hooks right here on the end to hang the duct tape and wire on, okay? Well, one day I thought if it's worth doing, it's worth doing poorly. Let's get this done. And so now I don't have to go, now there's not like three rolls of duct tape because I couldn't find the two, right? That's why there's two, because I couldn't find the one. So now that it's all organized, we got, that, we got that done. Employees only work in the system that management has created. Blame the process, not the people. It kind of goes hand in hand. So, let's see. You know, I'll, I just gotta keep moving. We'll, we'll touch on this as we go, about blaming the process, not the people. It's always a process issue or training issue. That's, that's our rules. Okay, so this is, we're gonna kind of roll through our day and so we start out with a morning meeting. A morning meeting is a very important lean tool. It's where we, it's where we grow our people. That's where it happens. We educate with them, we engage, we recognize good things that have happened. First thing we do, hearty good morning. Then we go over the improvements we made. So that's the improvement we made from the, well we harvest two days a week, so the, day, the harvest day before. Then we talk about the mistakes. It's, since we're blaming the process and not the people, it's when, when someone makes a mistake, we write it on the board. And it's not a shameful thing, because everyone knows they're not being blamed. It's the process. And they know that in the next morning meeting, there will be an improvement that fix that problem. And it, it's very important to us that that, is, that, that that happens like that. That when we talk about, when we have a problem on Monday, Thursday morning, we talk about the problem because it's on the board, and we talk about the improvement that fixed it because it's a process problem or a training problem, not a people problem. Um, then we read one page out of the book. Right now we're reading that two-second lean. Um, 
discuss one of our wastes. So we just run, I'll run through these real quick. These are wastes we've identified that, that'll really hurt us. Misproduction is the first one. So that's too much lettuce or not enough lettuce. Either way, it's a big waste. So if we've got too much, we've got all this product that we are throwing out. If we don't have enough, we're injecting so much chaos into our customers' lives. Um, maybe that's making, maybe like, I'm sounding more important than we actually are. That's how I feel. So, because they order and then we don't have it. So they have to reorder. And it's a lot of back and forth communication. It's a tremendous waste. Um, mistakes, that's another one. Poor crop growth. So just low yield, bad yield. That's dealing with aphids, dealing with mold. All this, tiny lettuce heads that we're gonna have to cut a lot more to get the same amount. That's, that's a big waste. Motion, walking around. When we're walking around, sometimes we feel like we're at work. But we're not, we're not doing anything when you're walking. So how can we cut this down? That's just one, one example. Um, looking for things, searching for things, things not being right where you need it. Waiting, that's an obvious one. We all know the construction worker leaning on the shovel. Uh, wasted human potential, that's a big one. To unlock your employees is very important. So we all have these terrific, gigantic, God-given brains. And so many employers, you can plug a person into a job and just kind of leave it. And that is a massive waste because that person could be, be improving that process. Moving on to the next thing, you know, it's, it's when you lock up your people, it's just, it's just the biggest waste of all. Um, I'll skip the next part. Uh, I'll talk about 3S a little bit. So 3S stands for sweep, sort, and standardize. It's another lean tool. Sweep. It's simple, we just clean up. Before we start, we clean up our work areas. We don't do this super consistently, to my shame, but we clean up our work areas before we start. Um, sort, we get rid of what we don't need. Why is this here? We don't even use it here, we use it over here. Get, um, move it to another area. Take it out of the greenhouse completely. Just, just freeing up freeing up the whole, the whole area for a, for a successful day. And then the last one is standardized. So, in this context, that means label different things. So things always go back to right where they are, right where they need to be. We we do this every now and then to uh, if the morning's meeting if the morning meeting is dragging, that happens. Um, we we do some stretches, and this has this has a lot of a lot of um, other benefits. You might think, well, it's stretching, you know, um, fewer injuries, whatever, and and that is true. But what it does is it enables dad and I to, to bring ourselves down to everyone else's level. Like, right? Like, like, I can't touch my toes either. Like, you know, we're all on the same level. And this second one, check for pit stains, and that's hilarious. Like, we all get a good laugh first thing in the morning. It's all, it's bringing us together as a team. All right, so now we're gonna walk kind of through our, our lettuce process a little bit, but not, not how we grow lettuce, because I don't think a lot of you maybe even care so much, but this, we're here to figure out what works, what processes work, and, and how we work on our processes, how we improve our processes, because that's, it's all about the process, so that's what a business is, it's a collection of processes, so here we've got Kanban cards, Kanban is a Japanese word for signal, and I don't know if you can see very well, well here, this, we've just got that card, um, attached to that can with a rubber band. And that is the last can, by the way. That's the last one you'd pull out of the freezer. So right here on this, on these cards, it says um, order when last can opens. So when you open that last can, you pull that card off and you put it in the holder. That's the signal that it needs to be reordered. Where do we reorder it from? Paramount. How many do we get? Two cans. How long will it take to get here? One week. We never run out. And this system works as, because it's simple. That anyone can do it. We're all trained on, on how to pull a combo card and put it in the holder. That's not hard. And so we never run out of seed. And we have almost all of our consumables are uh, on this system. Another one, another tool we've used more recently is um, a standard operating procedure. So 
this is mainly just a training tool and a guide for how we do things. It's, it's getting it out of our heads and onto paper. So imagine you run through this a few times with someone and then you leave them with this, with this um, guide to guide them through it on the next. That's very powerful, very powerful. You get a consistent outcome every time because if we're all following this guide, we either get the same problem every time or we'll get a perfect outcome every time. It's very repeatable. And that Kanban card, those Kanban cards and that, um, and that standard operating procedure, that was made on this app called Gimba Docs. Um, you don't, to be lean, you don't have to use this app, but it is what we use. Here we've got uh, an improvement. So this one was made on Thursday. Two days ago. So can you see the difference here? Here we were writing the name of the product and the date. Same thing here. But what we did was we came up with an abbreviation. So instead of multi-red 80, now we're writing M80. Saving us, it's about, call it half an hour a year. I think it was more like 50 minutes, but let's call it half an hour a year. So how are we going to make sure that we do that? To, to claim that half hour? Well, this is another kind of sub part of our uh, instructions on how to seed. We added this column. And this, so without, without standards, there can be no improvement. So with what you just saw with, that, um, with those abbreviations, we, now we, we put that column on the spreadsheet. So now we're all gonna do that. So next time we make an improvement, we'll change the standard operating procedure. And, and we're all gonna do that. And it's not just another, Oh yes, she uses the, she does the abbreviations, but I, I, I kind of forgot and I don't, no, we don't do that. We all, we, we just keep, we keep it tight. We, we just keep on moving. This is our ebb and flow table. This, we were, we were take these, before we'd take these trays and we'd, we'd soak them by hand. It was taking us half an hour, seven days a week. And we built this thing. It's all automatic now. It just does it. It's been a tremendous time saver. It's been a terrific improvement. Can you so, explain what, what there's liquid in the bottom? Or? Yeah, this isn't a very good picture, is it? So there's two, oh man, there's two of these side by side. So these are four foot by eight foot trays. And they're stacked, so this one has like three or four, three I think. And then the one beside it, same thing. But the bottom one is about that deep, and it's, it's just full of water, and there's pumps in there. So once a day, it pumps that bottom one dry, and it, it goes into these, these trays, these stack trays, and then it drains back in. Does that uh, once a day. Thank you. Okay. So from there, we uh, haul them to the back where we transplant to the back of these ponds. You can see little ones in the back and move forward. So this is another thing. This happened Monday. When I'm loading that cart for transplanting, once again, this is just this. This is how we improve the processes that we work on. That's that's kind of what I'm getting to here. So when I'm loading this cart, before I I wouldn't always get it in the proper order that we were going to transplant in. I would just just kind of go off of memory. I wouldn't do a precise job. And here's what I was doing: I was disrespecting the people down the line by not setting them up for for success. So, for example, this one here, it says mix, this is way too small, but it says mix one and a half trays mirror with one and a half trays butter. Well, I would just kind of throw them on there, kind of how I thought about. I wasn't cutting the tray in half, so it was one and a half and one, and then the next product, right? Does that make sense? I was not setting them up for success. That's disrespectful. So, now, very simple. Our transplanting instructions for the back, put them on the end of the oven flow. So now when I'm loading it, it's loaded perfectly. It's not close, it's perfect. All right, transplanting. There, I set a rule for myself, there could be no improvements in this talk that were older than two weeks, and there's no transplanting improvements that happened in the last two weeks. That, where, where were we? Why were we not there working with our employees? There's been complaints. They've had problems. They've been struggling with something at transplanting, surely, but what, why, weren't we, why weren't we there? to listen. I was out messing with the furnaces, working on a project, right? This leadership, we, we need to be there side by side. 
So after we transplant, they slowly come forward. Uh, we, twice a week, we're harvesting, transplanting, so it's just pushing it all forward. And now this is how, kind of moving more to a little bit more administration, but this is how we manage our orders. And this has been a massive improvement. So this is how we used to do it with the whiteboard. What happens when you get a new customer? What happens when you add a product? It was a huge pain. New customers were all at the bottom. They weren't in, in the order of the delivery routes. We had so many problems with this system. It, it worked well for, for quite some time, but there, there comes a time when you just outgrow your system. And, and what was happening is, for example, let's say Mustang Cafe ordered one green. Well, if you're following all the way over here, it's easy to get shifted one row down and you pack it for the wrong person. And yeah, we would figure it out and it works, but it wasn't perfect. We were trying to do a high quality work here. So we moved to a spreadsheet and I did not understand the power of color coding until we used this spreadsheet. But even, because once we moved to the spreadsheet, now we have a different issue. Now when dad and I are entering this in, with, when we're getting orders from customers, if these are our two most popular restaurant products. And, and we get those switched one column because the colors weren't there. So, so you're trying, so now, now you're doing the same thing, but you're coming down, right? So now that they're color coded, I can tell you right now, arugula, spring mix, butter, green leaf, red leaf, mix, basil. I don't even, it's all color coded. It's just, it's so simple. It's kindergarten. It really <laughs> is. So, and then, and then if there's a question mark, the, the name is orange. There's a question mark, the name is orange. So that, that means that we don't have an order from them and we need to say reach out or, or make sure we didn't miss anyone. So now this is another quality deal, how I told you how they would they were writing the names on the boxes and they could they could get it shift shifted. Well, we just cut out that whole process. And now what we're doing, this one's from this 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 little screen grab here is from this morning, but now they'll just pack one bib, three green, eight mix. There's none of this, none of this room for error because it's just we didn't need that. It's gone. And another another issue we're having, this I did this Thursday morning again. Um, so we like this is our this is the order and how we how we pack things. And what was happening is we like to do samples before a lettuce mix. So we have a nice we, we get the good stuff in the samples to go make a sales call. And then special orders, uh, this, well this is a good example, Monday, this special order row, we missed it entirely. So that's a mistake, it was on the board. Thursday, the, we, we talked about that mistake and we have an improvement. We've got, we've got this checklist here that we run through as we're harvesting. So, so now our, our samples get done before mixes, right when they're, right when, um, it's all going, it worked great. And another very simple improvement. This one's probably a week and a half old. Just don't be struggling. Don't be working against gravity. Just have it working for you. When you're packing this box, things are falling. Just it's these it's the attention to the little things that add up. That's the name of the book I showed before was two second lean. That's his idea. Two seconds at a time. We'll just we'll just work our way through this. Little improvements consistently. Here's another one, um, count, um, counting, another room, room for error. It's, you know, it's easy to blame, to blame an employee. Like, you know, didn't we learn to count a while ago? Like, you know, we got 11 instead of 12 or 13 instead of 12, but no, we don't do that. We blame the process. Let's, let's get this figured out. And so we made this and it's very simple. We all love it. It's so fast. <coughs> You just, if you need 12, now you'll just write down here. You'll write, say you're doing bib, you write bib, and then you just work your way down to that one. No more counting. That's all I have as far as that goes. Um, I did have a little bit on the sales. Um, now, I learned almost all this from dad as far as the sales go. And this, we're in, so we're in um, restaurants, grocery stores, schools, um, hospital or hospital cafeteria, I guess. Um, 
places like that. And, and I think our sales strategy works because of its simplicity. You know, we're selling to people just like us. They mentioned that, he mentioned that earlier, or someone did, how it's, you know, people buy from people. And we don't need something super complex. So this, this sales strategy has worked where, so like I said before, when Lander Billings um, made a few sales here in Riverton um, a few weeks ago, at their QTs at the Holiday Inn and then uh, at Bunks. Um, so I'll just, I'll just run through the sales pitch a little bit. This lean is the art of subtraction. So I've been subtracting very selectively from this sales pitch for a while because you want to get you want to get through it at a reasonable rate to get your customer talking because when your customer is talking there's a lot going on they're more comfortable because they're they feel more in control and they're communicating their problems to you and that that is where it's at you know bring us your problems help us you know we can we can work through this together so the sales pitch is very simple. It's, it's um, some, some variation of this. Hi, I'm Trent with Grable Valley Produce. I didn't even say my last name. I cut that out a few months ago, because who cares? <laughs> my dad and I grow and deliver fresh lettuce and herbs. And then, and then this next part. This was added about, about the same time, probably a month and a half ago. And why didn't we think of this sooner? Is local produce something you're interested in? And they're going to say yes. I don't know why we didn't think of that sooner, but since since I added that, I'm batting a thousand with it. I'm four for four with that line. So it's been really good. It, I've used it four times in uh, once in Lander, twice in Riverton, and once in Billings, and it's it's worked good. Yesterday driving to Billings, I didn't have the the customer locked up yet, and I was hoping that that he would say yes yesterday, because then I could say I was batting a thousand with it. So. Trent, Anyways, can I ask you so what? What is like a let's just say Molino? So what is it about local produce? I mean, I mean, there's things that we can say that sound appealing and great, but what what is for them getting the salad on the customers' plates? I mean, is it crispier? Is it greener? What what is the what is the practical reason for local produce? The benefit of local produce? Okay, when when did we ask all those customers what why they bought our product? Was that Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, so this week. We just we just went through and at most stops, I forgot several times, but ask, why do you buy from us? Like what so what what's marketable about us? Mm -hmm. And um, pitch in what you remember, but it was just the buzzwords fresh, local. Um, some we found that were interesting to us were, were taste. Some people were like, oh it's the taste. Uh, wasn't expecting that. Um, not showing up frozen. Uh, I think Cisco thro froze three deliveries that one week. I actually worked for a food company, not Cisco, with PFG. Do you know how many days lettuce sits on the truck before it gets to a customer? Average. No, let us know. Seven to 12. Oh boy. Because the truck comes from <laughs> wherever it comes from, delivers it to Marshall, Minnesota, <coughs> And sometimes the truck sits there two days before it even gets offloaded. And then it goes in our warehouse and they'll sit for up from two to seven days. And then it gets on our truck. I was out of Rapid City. So they'd ship the truck out. It would go to Brandon Valley and sit overnight. Then it'd get hooked to another truck and he'd come out and drop it for us at two in the morning. And then we'd pick it up about 2.30 or 3 and head out. If it wasn't snowing. And if it's not frozen. I mean because if the reaper breaks down, then you're, you walk in and you look and all your lettuce is black, you know, it. So if you, I mean, time on the truck is huge. I mean, and the taste has to be way better. So I think that's just the way you can sell it because I work for these guys and the stuff sits on the truck. I mean, just, it probably sits longer in the warehouse than it sits in your vehicle. You know, if yeah. you pick it and you deliver what, one day later? Yeah, the next day, yeah. yeah. You're, you're four, four to seven, maybe ten days ahead of the other lettuce. In the life of it, has got to be a lot longer. Yeah, that was a, must last a lot longer. Yeah, that was another thing we heard a lot. Shelf life. I actually wrote down some stuff. I don't. How much time do I got yet? You got 
15, 20 minutes. Oh, right, we're good. Yeah. Well, yeah, let's let's just open it. Oh, well, yeah. What, what what did I miss anything? Uh, in local, what does local mean? They're just glad to buy from someone from Wyoming to 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 keep dollars in the community. So, what? like you said, Molinos. So, um, I would say, well, I can't I can't remember exactly what Joe said. Just just give me a second. I've got it right here. Mouthfeel was one comment I got. They just like. It, take, it takes on less and sits in the truck like that. It takes the humidity on it. I mean, it gets not as crisp, not as good. And we grew our own last summer out of Laramie and lived there. And we kept it, I had it in the fridge, and we got a whole bunch of one a week. I mean, we got like four bags of it. So I stuffed it, and it was good for six weeks. You can't buy a head of lettuce in the store and keep it for six weeks. You just can't. Joe said it was coming so fresh and neat, so I don't know if that helps a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but that is what he said. So, yeah, and I think I think the marketability of it too, you know, it, and sometimes you see on their menus, you know, local spring greens, oh. things like that. So it's they're adding more value to their customer there mm -hmm. too. Um, the other thing with sales, I can't believe I forgot this is, is uh, persistence. Dad says he said this for years. It's the third sales call makes the sale, and that is so true. The, the place I went to in Billings yesterday, third time. You know, so many of these people you gotta go to three times. Just a multitude of reasons. Just just keep going. Till you get a definite answer. And their definite answer will sound something like, well, your last stuff went bad, even though you know it didn't. <laughs> Things like that. It's, you'll sometimes get excuses. But that's your answer. So it seems like you've been really committed to improving your processes but you still keep finding new process. So it seems like after a while you tend to be like Golden. dialed in. <laughs> but it seems like you, you still are always finding little things to tweak. Is yeah. that because you're growing, so there's always change needed? No, it's just because we're just waste tornadoes. 99%, well, they say 95, but I say 99% <laughs> of what we do is waste. For example, I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna show you guys an example, all right? This isn't anything to do with you, Micah, but we walk in here this morning and I'm like, I have my USB stick and I'm like, where do I plug it in? So Micah's like, well, I'm not sure. And we're looking around. He opens this and see, I can't even open this. He's like, what kind of handle is this? So we open this, see that struggle. This is room for improvement. I'm just showing you. So so we're, we're trying to plug my USB stick in here and it's all full. So he unplugs one and he's like, well, I'll just drag it onto the desktop Plug in your USB stick, drag it onto the desktop, and then we'll plug this back in when we're done. So we do that. See, that's all stuff I wouldn't have had to do. And like, I'm improving this. I'm labeling this. You know, if it's if it's at my place. So, so we, we do all our things. We plug all this back in. Shut this. Well, now I'm looking around this room. These tables were all straight. This table was like up against here. That's all wasted space. So we we moved the tables back. We kind of brought it in together, a little more like family. You know, a little learning time. It's just everywhere. Everything we do is waste, so wasteful. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Oh well, yeah, I see that in my life for sure. <laughs> Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Yeah, you have what's the name of the book? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. One thing, one thing I tell, one thing I tell our, our ladies that come help us pack, I said, take this home. All of you have that kitchen sink or that closet that is chaos. And everything defaults to chaos. Who doesn't have a drawer? That's chaos. It, it's just chaos happens. So that's a very good question. Improvement is continuous. You never stop improving because it will default to chaos. I have a question for you. Where did you get your background in hydroponics? I don't really have any background in hydroponics. My background is produce, I, but just a dirt farmer. Mm -hmm. I, I farmed sweet potatoes my whole life in California. And then we moved here to Wyoming in 16. And we bought a farm slash ranch cattle, but I had never had an animal in my life. And cattle just, I, I didn't know what I was doing. So we had this opportunity, and it was just back into produce. 
hydroponics was brand new. I had to learn that. So, but that's. And the marketing thing was kind of my dream. With sweet potatoes, we had got into the process of washing, sorting, and packing, but I had not got into marketing yet. And that was kind of my dream to develop a market and sell direct to customers and consumers. And so now this is kind of living that dream where we can actually grow the product, market it ourselves. Did you guys sell through land with Wyoming? Yeah. A little bit. She takes an average of three cases a week. Yeah. Six every other. Not a lot, but they help. So is hydroponics part of the lean system because you cut mm -hmm. out the wash step? No. From the dirt? No. no. Lean what lean came about a year ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's just uh, something we plugged in. What about pest problems? You know, we were visiting Riverview Farm. He was just sharing uh, how they're trying to grow as many things outside. Um, they d didn't quite understand, well, because beneficial insects were able to, to come in and uh, everything inside, you know, closed behind doors. They were having enormous trouble with, you know, aphids and, and other pest insects. Do you, do you have much problem with pests and what kind? Do you use IPM? What are, what are you doing? Well, we've got we've got serious pest problems. <laughs> Once again, this it, this just happened. We never had aphids until middle of January, and we had a complete infestation. Just just the arugula, you just go like this, and it was just they would just fall. It was aphids everywhere, and I just remember those first few days dealing with the aphids. I was like, problems make us happy. <laughs> I was trying to figure out, trying to find the silver lining, and well, I, the silver lining didn't hit till quite a while later. But so here's here's what we used for the aphid situation that worked. Um, we first off, where where go to the source? Why do you have aphids in your older stuff? Well, we had aphids clear back in the ebb and flow. So two aphids on a little seedling. That's going to be an infestation six weeks later. So, so you get them at the source. Always go back to the source. So um, we would dip them upside down in a solution, so I would wash them off mainly, and the ones that stayed would die. Um, we spray with organic sprays, so we started doing that a lot more, like chrysanthemum oil and, um, that one's Picanic, chrysanthemum oil, and then the Azadirac, and I'm not sure yeah. where that comes from, but it's all realistic stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and, and really hit the young stuff because two reasons. One, that's kind of, that's not the source, but it's, it's, it's closer to the source. And, you, and, and your, your spray, the, the way it works, just it gets a small plant a lot better. It gives a lot better coverage. So we did that. And then um, barriers helped a lot. We put barriers, like clean product that we knew was coming in. We would just put a barrier between it and the old stuff. So, because aphids don't really migrate, um, they're a pretty weak animal. You weren't getting any winged aphids? Not yet. Okay. No. Um, and then we did the ladybug thing. Um, did that work for you? Well, I've, I've seen people with you, but I just wondered how well it worked for you guys. We're doing a new trial right now. So, we're, we're, we had them in our basil again on Monday. And so we got in 9,000 and we put them just in a little basal area. So I'm expecting it'll wipe them out pretty good. The first, the first go around, we didn't get enough ladybugs and I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how well they did, but this is a new little trial we're doing. Um, talking to another greenhouse grower and he's had great, great luck. So got hopes, got hopes. Here's the silver lining though on why problems make us happy. I just feel like we have such an arsenal of tools now against aphids. Like we didn't, we were in the dark before, and this aphid problem got away from us, and we weren't, you know. Now we know all the little things of like when, like the scales, you know, on the young ones, and to to know we didn't know any of that before, and and now we have that knowledge. Well, any other questions? Other questions for Trent? What was this? Oh, go ahead. Oh, 
was just wondering what the solution was that you dipped the lettuce in. It was about, it was, it was that chrysanthemum oil, again, at half rate. So it was like half an ounce per gallon. Okay. And then what company do you order your ladybugs from? Uh, those are just off Amazon, Nature, Nature Good Guys, Mr. Nature's Good Guys. I think they guarantee life delivery. That's, that's the cheapest place. It was like 15 bucks for 9,000, I think. It's a good deal. You would have approached Jet by any companies while buying yellow? Because that's going to happen, I'm guessing. Not yet. Not yet. Any of, are you going to try to deal with any grocers as far as selling to bigger outfits? Well, we're talking with Albertsons right now. Um, beyond that, nobody's really contacted us. One issue, like the Albertsons stores we'd be dealing with would be Powell and Cody, mm -hmm. and probably the, the Safeway and Lander, I think is the same region. Um, I think there's five or six at Albertsons and Billings, but we wouldn't have supply to do that right now. Can you have the five? No. From the picture? What? Uh, the four greenhouses, oh, four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you guys find yourself with any waste product that you're not able to sell? sell? Well, we, tr we work very hard to not have any, and we've been doing pretty good. Um, that's probably gonna change, because I said something. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's been many, many wheelbarrow loads of lettuce of, have left the greenhouse, get dumped outside. Um, what happens is, say what? Do you compost it or what do you um, do? Pigs? Not really, it gets all pushed into a pile and it's just still there. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess if you want it. <laughs> what happened with that is, we've been in this facility a year and a half maybe. And before this, we were just in a 30 by 144. So we moved into here and we filled it with lettuce. Well. We didn't have the near the market to so that we did throw away a lot of lettuce during that time now all our trimmings or anything that we are throwing out we have a guy comes and gets it for his chickens so yeah right now we're not, we're not throwing hardly anything out another thing was just learning the new greenhouse like like you get such a growth acceleration right through this time of the year that if you keep planting what you were like it's gonna outrun you. Does that make sense? Like, cause you go from you go from seed to harvest six weeks to seed to harvest like four and a half. So now you have this massive, you have like a week and a half order that is extra basically. And that's that's spread out over a few months, but that's another reason why we threw out so much last year was we didn't have that quite dialed. So you go year round, but parts of, parts of the year it takes longer to, to grow a head of lettuce? That's right. Okay. Yeah. Two questions. So one, for timing-wise, to reduce waste, if your lettuce is taking six weeks to grow out, you're doing orders at the beginning of the week for the end of the week, like a week out of your orders. Or? Um, so today's Saturday. I'll be getting. I'll be sending out the text um, for Monday today. So how do you time that if you had to grow Monday's lettuce six weeks ago to Trial not have error. over under production? <laughs> Trial and error. Just based. <laughs> Just Previously, tried. these people ordered this much, so we'll. Yeah, yeah. Just, I'm sorry, I don't have a good, <laughs> good, fancy spreadsheet for you, but I don't have anything. Um, another thing, we do have grow lights, so we've been shutting those off over our bib because it's getting big on us. So, there's a little bit you can do, but in, in the grand scheme of things, there's not a lot. You just. Just sell more. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you gotta lock on doors. Go knock on doors. That's what we've been doing. Um, how do you guys heat your greenhouses? <coughs> we, we visited a greenhouse yesterday, and they one of them was like geothermal. I'm just wondering how you guys heat yours. Uh, we use an uh, air-to-air coal furnace, mm -hmm. and that's very important because we can pull in outside air. Humidity is our biggest enemy in the winter time. If we can pull in that dry outside air, and just a little bit, we we do a recirculation. But we'd pull in a little bit of that dry air, that's huge. It's huge for us. Then you have natural gas backup behind that. But you said coal? Coal, yeah. Wow. They're, uh, the coal furnaces come out of uh, Arkansas, they're for chicken barns. So 
that's what we're using. And then my other question is on, like on your pods, are you using like peat pods on your trays? Yep, that's, that's peat moss. We just buy the whole, the whole shebang. It comes filled. Do you have any plans for like sustainability for that? Like peat bogs are a big... Not yet. Sustainability issue on the forefront. Um, we would we would love to not use those because that yeah. it's a huge it's just the company that makes them is just a mess to work with. Maybe that's why they're having all these issues. Maybe they're running into they're from Canada. I don't know. Maybe they're running into some of that. I don't know. But we've been we were talking yesterday or the day before about how we we got to get something figured out. I don't know if there's if there's a mixture we could come up with ourselves. It would it would really help us out. Ideas for improvement. If anyone has any ideas, let us know. Well, yesterday Ethan mentioned um, using wool as a growing medium in the greenhouse. It's like that's something to experiment with. Okay. I was talking to a woman who wants to buy a bag and play with it. Yeah. Do a sample. She has a table right out here. Okay. Well, maybe we should talk to her. Some some of those like there's an oasis cube, I think it's called. Yeah. Different things like that. The germination is is tough really tough with some of that and I don't know if we just haven't experimented enough or or what but but some of that you run into germination issues but it's something we need to just keep looking into did you choose that BWC over the NFT because it's less humidity um, because of like mold so and things like that from what I know about it Probably the main reason for us is the BWC is about half the cost to set up, or maybe even less. It's very economical. The NFT system is, I'm going to say, almost a must in the Deep South where they have really hot, humid summers. Because they need that airflow, they need to keep that cool underneath the plants as well as above and keep that air moving. And uh, BWC, you will fight more humidity issues. Trent mentioned that, but here in Wyoming, why, uh, humidity has hardly been an issue for us. I've often said we, we live in a perfect climate for what we do. We have coal, we have very low humidity. We never had an aphid until January. I didn't know if they existed or not, but <laughs> found out the hard way they sure enough did. But anyways, the BWC works great. This Trent, do you have so we I know a grower in, down in Florida and, and he's um, having so many issues with diseases and insects that he designs his uh, greenhouses and high tunnels to have a um, uh, uh, what do you call it a cha like a, a chamber like you go in one door and you shut it and then they you know will have a sticky mat or whatever and then then you open the next door to, to keep because every time you go in and out, there's a, op, there's possibilities of insects or uh, uh, spores or whatever go, going with you. So um, anyhow, he's really sensitive about about that. You know, let, let's have this air chamber uh, a place where we can try try to eliminate something coming in um, into the house. So anyhow. Yeah, I can, I can imagine something like that would be needful in the south. It, greenhouses in the south, from what we've heard, it's it's rough. It's rough down there. You know, one end of our greenhouse opens up, you know. It's kind of a different ballgame. Oh, okay. You, you know, it's, but I, I can fully agree with you in the south. They, I have a cousin with a greenhouse down there, and he doesn't run through the summer. It's just too hot. It doesn't work. Yeah, too, I, too hot. I can't remember yeah. what, what all the deal Tomatoes won't pollinate. It's too hot. Yeah. But cleanliness is huge, and that's that's one part of our three S thing in the morning is is cleaning. Just even I had a guy from from Alaska tell me when we were dealing with this aphid issue, I was calling around, and uh, he said cleanliness in the seedling table, he thought was important for aphids. So that that ties in. All right, sounds like we're kind of coming to a natural end here. So help me thank Trent for his.